Welcome, valued viewers, to our program today. What would you do if a dangerous, heavily armed criminal attacked your neighbor, murdered him, stole all his belongings, and then just stayed there living on his property? Exactly. You would immediately call the police for help. This call for help already went out concerning the situation in Ukraine to the World Security Council in form of a Russian internet petition. However, it is more than questionable if anyone there will listen. For if we take a look at the cooperation between the US government, NATO and the UN in comparison with this dangerous criminal just mentioned, we notice that more than $18.5 trillion US national debt cry out for a balance through gold, oil, natural gas and other valuable treasures in the countries rich in natural resources, in Africa, the Middle East and Asia, but also in Europe. The much greater amount of natural gas reserves in Russia also certainly awaken greed on the part of America. U.S. defense and arms expenditures at $640 billion, which according to the Stockholm Institute for Peace, is almost as much as all other countries in the world together, allows for misgivings about how the USA plans to reduce its debts. With a total balance of six bombed countries, eight overthrown governments, at least two murdered heads of state, Barack Obama and his predecessor in office, George W. Bush, make no secret of what they mean by a democratization of the world. That the one world dictatorship strategy of the master planners, predominantly operating through the US government, is also directed against the American people themselves, is clearly illustrated by the fact that concentration camps are being built in the USA and millions of plastic coffins have been produced. Also, the gigantic military equipment and weapons transport operation by the USA and their NATO allies towards the Russian border gives us a foreboding that the Ukraine was only a little appetizer for the insatiable lust for power of the power elite striving for a one-world government. The US Congress passed the Russian Aggression Prevention Act 2014, which already gives us an insight today into what will be written in future history books. It describes the agenda, and I quote, for freeing the Western world from the Russian aggressor. What occasion should there be for Russian aggression? The people of Russia and its economy have been experiencing a blossoming like they've never seen before, with a sensationally low national debt and a secure energy supply due to self-reliance. As a result of this, Russia did not need to bomb a single country during the past decade, nor overthrow any governments, nor murder any head of state, and not even threaten a single country. So how will this continue if, in spite of all provocations and sanctions, Russia does not carry out the initial military attack desired by the United States? Will there be then yet another false flag operation by the USA, a self-initiated attack that will then be blamed on Russia? The mass media's job in this would then be to raise the war cry and drive the peoples of the world into a third world war, which would destroy everything. Then the vision of a reduction of the world's population to 500 million people, which was chiseled into stone 30 years ago, will become a reality. You can read this on the guide stones in the state of Georgia, USA, those six meter high stone slabs which reveal this vision blatantly in six languages as a top priority command. All of this could become reality if you, yes I mean you, don't start confronting yourself with all the facts. For example through media commentaries like this one. Wake up your environment and get your friends, family and acquaintances to do the same thing. Let's work together to stop this irrational, irresponsible warmongering. And we wish you an evening now worthy of the current world situation and all the courage necessary to do whatever you can still today. Good evening.